Hey guys, I'm GML Waffle, and in this tutorial we're going to be going over gamepad support. So, as usual, I have things set up in advance. We've got a sprite, and in this sprite we have each and every single key that we're going to be going over today. We're going to be doing it a little bit differently. We're going to have two parts for this series. The first episode is going to cover the basic button input, and the second part is going to go over the joystick input, as joystick input can be a little bit difficult depending on what you're going to do. So with that being said, we also have a controller object with a create and step event, but the code is empty. We're going to be going over that. And we have a draw object with a draw set in place. And then if we go into our room, I just have both of the objects set into the room. Nothing else added. So jumping right in, the first thing we're going to do is inside of our controller object, in our create event, we're going to set a variable called gamepad connected, and it's going to be boolean set to false. Then we're also going to set the image index equal to zero and the image speed equal to zero. We're doing that because we want the first image to be this image of no key, so no key is being pressed at that time and the speed needs to be zero so we're not getting a constant animation of every single key being pressed. So in the step event, we're going to go over the gamepad connected variable. So the first thing we're going to do is say if gamepad is connected, zero, and then open bracket. And what this does is it checks to see if there's a gamepad connected in the first slot, which is slot zero. So you can actually do this for multiple game pads, uh, zero through three or whatever, because if you have a multiplayer game, you're gonna wanna check for multiple game pads, of course. But for this, we're just having one game pad, so just the zero works. So if the game pad is connected, then we're going to set game pad connected equal to true. And then we're gonna create an else statement and say game pad connected equals false. The else statement will just check to see the opposite of this, so if it's not connected, then we're going to get false returned. Alright, so we're done with the controller object for the moment. We're going to go into the draw, and we're going to say if obj underscore controller dot gamepad connected, open bracket, we're going to draw text at the x and y position of our draw object. And our text is going to say controller one is connected and then we're going to add an else statement and inside the else statement we're going to say draw text at the x and y position no controller plugged in all right so in order to call a variable from a different object you have to call the object dot whatever your variable it is so I didn't set it to global so we have to do it this way and so if the gamepad is connected we're going to draw that the controller one is connected else it's gonna say no controller plugged in so if we go ahead and run this you'll see that we have no controller plugged in but if I go ahead and plug my controller in it changes to controller one is connected alright so moving on from that now we're going to go into key presses so if we go into our controller object again, in the step event, we're going to say if gamepad button check pressed, and the index is going to be zero because it's our first controller, and the button index is going to be GP for gamepad underscore face one. This is going to be the A button. So face one is A, face two is B, face three is X, and face four is Y. So open a bracket here. If it's pressed, then we want to set our image index equal to one. Because if we open up our sprite here, you'll see that the first image after image zero is the A button. And it goes through in order. So then we want to say else if gamepad button check released, 
zero GP face one. I don't need the underscore. And if it's released, then our image index is going to reset back to zero. So gamepad button check press works in the exact same way that keyboard check press works. They're basically the exact same, but gamepad button check pressed checks for the gamepad, of course. So we're going to go up here and comment off that this is the A button. What we can do is we can actually just copy and paste this three more times down. And we're going to say this one is face two. And it's the B button. And the image needs to be image two. So if we go back and run this now, we press the A button, the B button, the X button, and the Y button, they all change accordingly. So now we can add the start and select buttons. The exact same way we added those ones, it's going to be GP underscore select. And we'll check our image index here to see what image it needs to be. So for our select button, it's nine and start is 10. So image index equals nine for the select button. And if we release the select button, we want it to go back to zero. Then we can copy this and paste it down. We need to change that to say select button so we don't get confused. And this one will be the start button. And we'll change that to GP underscore start with the image index of 10 gp underscore start is released then it'll image index back to zero all right so if we press a b x y and now select and start all right so i'm not going to go over every single one and just copy and paste because they're all going to be the same just with the button index change so if you wanted to know what each one was we'll just go through them type gp underscore and then we'll get this little pop down list so in this pop down list you'll see Axis LH, that is the joystick. All of the axis ones are joystick, but we're not going to cover those in this tutorial. So face one through four, of course, is our A, B, X, and Y. Pad D would be the D pad down. Pad L is left. Pad R is right. Pad U is up. And then, of course, our select. Shoulder RL would be the right left trigger. Shoulder right LB would be the left button. Shoulder R would be the right trigger. And shoulder R right B would be the right button and then start and then GP stick L and GP stick R are the joysticks pressed down so that is basically everything you need to know in order to get started adding gamepad support for your game so if you enjoyed this tutorial please be sure to hit that like button comment what you thought down below and don't forget to subscribe for future videos in the next part we'll go over joysticks and how to implement them into your game as always i'll see you guys next time